Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at a new drive enclosure from Acasys. This is a USB 4.0 enclosure for an NVMe hard drive. And we're going to install this Samsung 970 Evo in it in a few minutes. Now this is one of the first devices I've seen that is incorporating Thunderbolt technology into a non-Thunderbolt device. Uh, that's because Thunderbolt is part of USB 4 now. And the manufacturer says that this will work with a USB 4 laptop along with Thunderbolt 4 and 3 equipped laptops and computers. And it will also work with regular USB Type-C devices as well. And we're going to test the performance and the compatibility in this review in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that the enclosure here came in free of charge from the manufacturer. However, I did pay for the one terabyte 970 Evo here with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this enclosure is all about. Okay, let's take this thing out of the box and we'll see what's inside. And we'll pull everything out here. So we have a little instruction guide here that gives you some information about what it supports and how to install the drive. Um, it looks like it supports the M key. And I'll give you an image they have up on their Amazon product listing. Uh, so it's the M key interface, B and M, and you can see what it supports here. So what it doesn't work with are B key drives, but M and B and M keys do work. So if you are curious as to whether or not your drive is compatible, uh, there you go. It looks like it's only NVMe and not uh, serial ATA, according to the graphic here. I believe it can support up to eight terabytes of capacity if you can find a drive that large. So there you go. Um, it looks as though it will support um, regular Type-C connections and Thunderbolt, as I mentioned, so we'll give that a shot in a little bit. Here is the enclosure itself. It is all metal, which I hope it would be because it's going to need to dissipate some heat there. And then you, I guess you just pry open the bottom here. There is a screwdriver that it comes with along with some mounting screws here as well. And it does have a Thunderbolt 3 cable. And this will apparently work not only with Thunderbolt but also with USB-C. So there you go, and then you've got your connector there on the sides. So let me see if I can pry this open with my hands, otherwise I might need to get a screwdriver out. Now the screwdriver they give you is a Phillips head, and I don't know if that's going to easily pop the thing open here for us. So let me give it a shot here and see. There's a little bit of a lip on it, but yeah, it's really, really tough there. So let me get this thing open, and then we'll take a look and see how our drive can go inside of it. All right, so I got the top part here pried off. I just needed to get a bigger screwdriver that I could get a little bit more leverage and strength with. So that popped off. It doesn't screw in. You just snap it back on. And I'll give you a look at the internals here. It doesn't look like much, but we'll see how it all works. Now what I'm going to do is install the uh, NVMe drive here that I purchased. So I'm going to pop that in there and just pop it down there. And we just need to screw it down with one of the two included screws that it comes with. So let me get that screw on there and we'll put it all back together and see how it performs. Now one thing that I noticed was in the box that wasn't mentioned in the instructions is a little thermal pad they give you, but look how thin this is. There's like no width to it, so I don't even know if this is going to come in contact with the top of the case to cool it off. Uh, but I'm going to put that on top anyhow just because it's in the box and it's something you should probably do. Uh, but it doesn't feel like it does anything. Uh, I don't think the top of the case here even comes in contact with the top of the drive either. Um, so I'm not sure how well this is going to do on heat dissipation. And the one thing about thermals on these devices is that it's going to be dependent on the drive that you have. So some drives handle those thermals better than others do. Um, so just keep that in mind as you're using this, that you might see different performance than what we might measure on this in a few minutes. I'm going to snap this together now, and there we go. So I think we are all assembled. Uh, so what I'm going to do next is boot up the Windows PC I have on my desk here. This supports Thunderbolt 4, uh, so it should work fine with this. And we're going to run some benchmarks on it, get an idea as to how it's performing versus being installed directly. And then after that, we'll try it on a Mac and on a USB-equipped computer as well. So let's get it plugged in and see what happens. All right, so we're ready to go here. We've got the Thunderbolt cable attached on one end, and we will plug it in here to the other. Again, this is the cable that it came with. Feels pretty nice, decent Thunderbolt cable. There goes my other adapter there. And I did not hear the system beep to say that it discovered something being plugged in. The light here did light up. And what I'm curious about here is whether or not this shows up as a Thunderbolt device or a USB device. So let's jump over to uh, the screen here and see. And it looks like it is picking it up 
as a USB 4 SSD and it does say that it's connected. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is jump into the disk utility here and format it and let's see if we can write some data to it. All right, we're ready to do a test. We got the Blackmagic disk speed test here loaded up. Uh, this, by the way, is a Yoga 9i leather from Lenovo. Uh, they sent this to the channel on loan for a review that I did the other day. Really kind of neat machine. It's got a leather backing on it, but this is the most powerful or at least the most current laptop that I have here in the studio and it has a Thunderbolt 4 port. And as you saw, it was detecting that USB 4 device within the uh, Thunderbolt thing. Now, this very same drive is what I use on my desktop computer to record video here on the channel. And this is what I got uh, from that drive on my desktop computer a little bit earlier, about 2.3 gigabytes per second writing and about 2.9 gigabytes per second reading. These drives are super fast. Uh, but they tend to be a little bursty because once they heat up, they kind of slow down a bit. But it's never been a problem for my video recording. And what I'm going to do now is hit the start button here on the test and let's see what we get. And boy, that's disappointing, huh? We're only writing out at about 500 megabytes per second. Although I suspect there's a setting that we have to adjust to get the most out of this. Because as you can see here, the read speeds are much closer to uh, what we were experiencing on the desktop. So let me show you what that special setting is to improve performance here on the drive. All right, so to fix this problem, we have to adjust the right cache settings on the drive. And to do that, we're gonna pull up a Windows Explorer thing here. I'm going to select our test drive here that we formatted a minute ago. I'll go over to Properties. And I'm just gonna move the window up here a little bit. Uh, what you wanna do is go over to Hardware. You wanna select the drive that you have installed inside of your enclosure and click on Properties again. And then you need to go over here to change settings. And there might be a quicker way to get to that screen, but this is how I usually do it. And then what we're gonna do is go over to policies. And right now you can see that it's set to quick removal, which is the default. Uh, but we wanna actually enable here better performance. And that's going to light up uh, this option here for write caching. And this is one of the issues that uh, you will encounter when you do enable this, which is that if you pull the drive out before that cache writes back out to the disk, you could lose data. So you can't treat this like some cheap USB drive that you can just pop out at will. Uh, you really got to be careful here to eject it properly uh, before you remove the drive physically. Otherwise, you're in trouble here. Uh, I'm going to leave uh, this second option off because I want to get the best performance out of it. So I'm going to click OK here and click OK again. And now the drive has remounted. So now let's go back to the disk speed test. It should be in the same position it was before. I'm just going to point it again at our D drive. And we're going to start the test again. And now, look at that. We're getting much better write speeds. We're not getting what we saw out of my desktop computer here. Um, but this does look a lot better uh, than it did just a minute ago. So not bad there on the writes, although definitely behind what we would see on a desktop computer. There's always some penalty to using one of these enclosures, and usually it tends to be on the right side here, but overall uh, we're doing better than we were before. And again, for reference, this is what we were seeing on the desktop computer when we had this plugged directly into a motherboard. All right, so we also just ran the crystal disk mark here in between takes, and this test not only measures your sequential read and write speed like we were doing on the Blackmagic test a minute ago, it also looks at random reads and writes, and the last three rows of this result here uh, indicate the performance that you'll get out of the drive inside of this enclosure on this computer. And everyone's mileage is gonna vary based on the computer you're using, uh, the drive you picked. So your results here will undoubtedly be different than mine. But what we can do is compare it to how this drive performs on a desktop computer. And here you go. This was run a little while ago on my production PC. And you can see here that not only are the sequential reads and, and writes faster, uh, most of the random reads and writes are a lot quicker plugged directly into a motherboard versus going through the enclosure. There's always a penalty to be had here, and that is what you're seeing play out here between these two sets of numbers. All right, so we got it hooked up now to my MacBook Air. This is with the new M1 chip. And before we run the speed test, let's take a look at the system report here and see how the drive shows up. So again, it's showing up under the Thunderbolt bus. Uh, but it's showing as a USB 4 device. And as you can see here, we are connected at up to 40 gigabits per second. 
So we are getting the uh, full bandwidth of that cable, I believe. So there you go, that's a good sign. And let's close out of that and let's get the speed test going here and see how this drive performs. We'll hit the start button. Uh, this, by the way, is a new version of the speed test that is optimized for the M1 Mac. Now you'll note here that the M1 Mac is writing to the drive a little slower than the Windows machine was, but we're reading the drive a little faster here on the Mac versus the Windows machine. Now I also plugged it into my MacBook Pro upstairs with an Intel processor and that one did a little bit better on the writes, as you can see here, much closer to the Windows computer we just tested. So we got my Surface Laptop Go out now here on the desk, a really nice lightweight Windows laptop that I bought and reviewed a few weeks ago. And you'll note that we've got a USB Type-C port here along with a traditional USB-A port. And this one does not have Thunderbolt. It is just a USB-C computer. But we're gonna take out the Thunderbolt cable here anyhow and plug it in and see what happens. So we'll attach that, and hopefully the drive will uh, mount itself here. There it goes, so it looks like it is working. Uh, let's get in a little closer on the screen now and run the Blackmagic Disk speed test and see how it does. It shouldn't get even close to where it was before because this doesn't have Thunderbolt, but let's see what we can get out of this enclosure anyhow. All right, so let's hit the start button and see how we do. And again, we're uh, well under what we saw on the Thunderbolt-equipped PCs, but over USB, we're doing pretty well here, and it's definitely making use of the 10 gigabits of bandwidth that it has available to it. So that is not bad at all. And it's nice to see here that we've got something that'll work on a Thunderbolt computer and work on a USB computer and make the best of whatever connection it has to work with. Now this laptop also has a USB-A connector. So let me stop the test here, pop the drive out, and plug it into the other USB port to see how it works on that. So this is one of these standard USB-C to USB-A cables. We're not gonna run another speed check here. We're just checking out compatibility. So I'm gonna take the USB-C side of this and pop it into the back of the enclosure here. And I'm gonna take the USB-A portion and plug it into the USB-A port. What I'm looking for here is just to make sure the drive can mount itself, and we should see that window pop up again like it did before. Maybe I'll just copy a file over to it real quick and write something out to the disk. So it looks like if you've got an old computer with a big old USB-A port with the right cable, this will work on this all the way up to your Thunderbolt-equipped PC. Now, from a thermal perspective, I did not notice my drive throttling at all, even when we were running that a Blackmagic disk speed test for a sustained period of time in Thunderbolt mode. The case was definitely getting warm, but that's a good sign that it's able to get some of the heat uh, from the inside to the outside, which is kind of what you want to see. So overall, it was a good experience for me, uh, both in performance and sustained performance. But your mileage will vary based on the drive that you choose and the things that you're doing to the drive while you're writing data to it. Typically, you will see some throttling, especially if you're writing out very large uh, amounts of data over a sustained period of time, but we didn't see that uh, with the Samsung drive on here. And overall, pretty nice little enclosure. I like the fact that it's universally compatible, so you get the best out of your Thunderbolt connection if you have one, but it also is backwards compatible with USB. USB is a bit confusing. We did a video on all of the different things that USB supports now, but if you have a computer that has USB 4 on there, at a minimum, you should be able to get the 20 gigabits of bandwidth out of this that uh, that spec has at its minimum. And then for computers that support the 40 gigabit option, it'll of course work with that as well. If you plug it into a Thunderbolt PC, it should support the 40 gigabits all the time. And it was nice to see that the uh, cable that it came with, the, US, the Thunderbolt 3 cable, uh, is adequate for all connections that you might use with it. So all in, not a bad little enclosure here, fun little project if you want to build your own external SSD. And that's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Jim Peter, Tom Albrecht and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.